on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Happy Monday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Open Line. I hope you had a good weekend, by the way. I'm Carrie Sharp. We have a great hour for you to call in, be informed. We're talking about the coronavirus with the city's top doc. Dr. Alex Jahungir is joining us once again. He is the chairman of Metro's Coronavirus Task Force. Uh, Dr. Jahungir, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. It, you know, we really had a great conversation. You said it was about a month ago. It seems like we've done a year's worth of life in between uh, last <laughs> time we talked and today. But I thank you for sitting down and devoting this next hour once again. We got lots of calls last time. I hope we do again. The number is on the bottom of the screen. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. Taylor's in the back. He'll get you lined up and we'll get those questions on. In the meantime, let's talk about the delay, a delaying of phase three. Phase three was supposed to start today, um, but it had to be postponed. Let's talk about that. Why was that? Well, I, I, I will say we never actually said it's going to start True. today. True. Um, I, I want to clarify, you know, our, when we put out the roadmap now about six weeks ago, we said at the minimum every 14 days we would advance to the next phase. So with that timeline, the fastest it could have gotten to was today. But, but I think what, what is really important is, as we've always said, is the data um, really drives um, our decisions. And, and if you look at the really the big six metrics we were looking at, um, you know, a lot of it was good. So let's start with the good, and I'll tell you why we might have slowed down. So our transmission rate, so how quickly this is going around the community is, is at one. And we always wanted one to, one to be that magic number, one or below. So we're there. Our public health capacity, from the time you and I spoke, um, to much less from the time when this whole thing started. We started with four people who do what's called contact tracing to 125 right now, wow. so really strong. Testing capacity, we test over 7,000 individuals a week now in our city. Um, and in our hospital capacity, it's in the upper 20 to 30% range of both ICU and hospital regular bed capacity right now, all of which is great. But the 14 day trend, so we look at how many fast cases are coming on. And the reason we pick 14 days is that's the lifespan of this psych of this virus. So within 14 days, you're either gonna have the virus, show symptoms and recover, or worse, you know, have the virus and pass away. So 14 days is that reason that number is picked. At that point, our 14 day trend has been heading upwards over the past several days. Um, today was a good day, we announced 72 cases, but over the weekend we had a, an 120s, 130s range. And, um, and, and so we just kind of wanted to pump the brakes a little bit, right? So I'm not saying we're not gonna advance maybe later in the week, um, because our, our again our hospitals have been able to take care of our patients we've been able to um, because of our expanded contact tracing quickly isolate clusters that we may find but sometimes you just have to pump the brakes and just make sure that that you can handle the, the increased heat if you will before you really open up the gate so that's kind of why we we didn't start it today it's one reason why we still delayed um, at least a few more days to see the data over the next few days but again, I, I feel hopefully optimistic in the next several days we can we can move forward. One thing that a lot of people have been talking about over the past week to 10 days are the protests that are happening across the nation. But let's talk specifically here in Middle Tennessee. Some people have worn masks. A lot of people have not. Um, as you watch these as a doctor, as somebody really keyed in on here on the coronavirus, uh, what are your thoughts moving forward from this of what we're going to see medically out of this? Well, well, I, I appreciate the question. I, you know, I didn't actually attend myself, although I, I'm supportive of, of the cause. Um, but from what I saw on TV and from what I what I um, speaking to a lot of people who did attend, um, actually, I think a lot of people did did wear a mask a lot. And so I, I would maybe push back a little bit there. So I'm grateful to um, the people who were, who who were marching who did wear a mask, and I think a lot of people did. Um, another thing that that I think is is positive um, in regards to COVID and, and um, mask items like that is it was it was outdoors I mean it's been shown that being outdoors is a better because of the airflow is is better for minimizing risk of infection and from what I understand there was transient contact amongst people so um, that that's positive now with that being said I think one can't um, you know sugarcoat the fact that there's still a lot of people who were close who were um, speaking much louder than, mm -hmm. than yeah. um, you know yelling even uh, and that projects. So I, I think um, it's something we need to look at. And um, five to seven days is typically how long it takes for symptoms to show after one's been exposed. So we're thinking probably within this week, if we're going to see an uptick, uptick it would be this week, right? Um, well, 
potentially from the first round. Now, I will say if we see upticks um, tomorrow and other things, I think it's important for us to have context. Um, not every uptick we'll see over the next week is a direct result of, of this. So I want people to be very clear to not directly correlate an increase in cases, um, which we may have over the next few weeks or days even, to directly to this. Um, as Because of our really strong um, epidemiologists in the Department of Health, um, this is a question I ask anytime I see any reports. And, um, I, and I think it's really critical for us to make sure we don't tie A to B without uh, more information. And explain how you guys really zero in on where these upticks are coming from, or just if there is a cluster, how you determine that. Sure, so the, the 125 contact tracers that I mentioned to you, the epidemiologist at the Department of Health, or of Metro Public Health Department, excuse me, um, when there's a positive case, um, we call we call an individual. So when you when you you know let's say I was positive, somebody would call me the moment within a day of when I have um, that positive result. Um, then they'll ask me, hey, what do you, what first of all, how do you think you got it? And if if you know, great. But if you don't, they'll start asking questions. Well, where did you travel? Where did you work? Who were you interacting with? And the interactions are really six feet together um, for ten minutes or longer. And then based on that, then they'll make a story. All right, well. This person went, let's say, to his grandmother's house, and then his uncle was there with them, and and then and then we'll then we'll call those contacts. And so, really, you you find the index patient, and then you expand out from there, and that's how you determine um, if if it's a bigger thing. Let's say let's say all of a sudden everyone went to a a, a church sermon together, okay, or mm -hmm. a concert together, and and we start making these these connections. They may not know that the other person had it, but. We now call the you know 72 patients that turn positive today, and all of a sudden, let's say six were at one location. Well, then we've got a an outbreak, as as you've heard that terminology. But let's say they're all in one place, and we can cluster them together, and we know that it's not really spread through the community. Well, you treat that very different than if all of a sudden we think, oh my God, there was a big concert, 200 people got it, and each of those people have now infected four other people. Um, so there is a, there's a lot that goes into it. So we should give a quick. Answer, but but I do want to say one last thing, if I can, about about sure. the the protest is I think if you're worried about the virus, so if you, I'm not making a recommendation, everyone who went should get tested. But if you have any reason to worry, whether it's symptoms or you just you just need to know, remember we have a commu three community assessment centers um, that are open um, five days a week from nine to three, and there we get free assessments, free testing, and it's about ten minutes through to do it. So please go to one of those places if if it is something that worries you. Do you think at all, and I have two questions kind of along the same vein, when it comes to testing that people think, okay, I got tested, I'm fine. You know, I get my results back pretty quickly now. Um, you know, I don't have the virus. And then they might let down their guard a little bit, even though they could head out to the store and pick it right up, right? Absolutely. I think that's such a great point that um, just because you got one negative test doesn't mean that you're, you're home free. Um, so yeah, I think always be vigilant. That's why we keep keep telling you, be vigilant, be vigilant, be vigilant, because unless you had had the virus and then you, you build immunity to it, and we don't know how long that immunity lasts, I wanna highlight that, you're gonna, you, there's always a chance you can get it, whether it's, it's leaving the testing center or the day after. That's a good point. I do want to go back to that, what we maybe have learned about this virus in the past month. But I also want to ask you about, and I'm sure you've witnessed this in your own life. I've seen it when I've been out to the grocery store or had to make a quick trip into a store. There seems to be virus fatigue. There are, at least where I live in Wilson County, not a lot of people wearing masks anymore and haven't been for a week or two. Are you seeing the same thing when you're out and about? Yeah, I am. I'm seeing it in Wilson County, Williamson County, Davidson County. Um, and I, 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 as I said, I think in the press conference this morning, there's a lot going on in our city right now. Um, but let's not forget COVID is very rampant in our city. I mean, we have, you know, hundreds of cases a week that, that present. And, and the best way to minimize that is to wear a mask, wash your hands. And, but I get it. I mean, listen, I, I get fatigued. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to say I'm better than anyone else. I mean, I am fatigued of having to do these, these extra precautions. I'm fatigued of not being able to go and hang out with my friends as often as I used to. Um, but gosh, I mean, you know, these are unprecedented times. And, and, you know, if this is the worst that I've got to do to keep myself and my family and my grandparents from getting sick, I mean, my, my God, I'm going to do it. So, yeah, it's fair. But let's let's be strong. I mean, Nashville's strong, Middle Tennessee strong. 
and we just got to sometimes suck it up and do it. I want to talk to you about these hospital capacity numbers, and I think the numbers you said are between 20 and 30 percent that we have open beds right now. What is normal mm -hmm. when we're not talking COVID? What's normal for a hospital to have? You know, um, I think um, less than that's normal, to be honest. Uh, you got to remember, for a while, hospitals had shut down, and so we <laughs> yeah. were having capacities of 30, 40 percent. Um, you know, I'm one of my day jobs is I'm an associate chief of staff at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and, and so part of my part of that responsibility is you look at hospital capacity, and and there are um, and I've seen over the the many years I've done that hospital capacity gets gets low because we live in a city that's amazing. We have so many great hospitals, thousands of hospital beds, and amazing providers, and because of that, people come from all mm -hmm. over the place, 65,000 square miles to be exact on a helicopter, much less what you can get with planes. I mean, you will fly into all our hospital systems. So, you know, normally it's, it's um, hospitals are, I mean, they run pretty full, but, but what I want to highlight is each hospital um, has a surge capacity as well. So the numbers, I we 20% of their normal capacity. So there's a surge capacity. And on top of that now, as you saw Friday, National General has built additional capacity mm -hmm. that the state will use as an alternative care site in case we really even need more capacity in addition to that, um, there's the state and, and through conversations that I've had with them, I've even identified other locations if we needed to go back to, um, remember, if you remember, we had initially want, we're about to build a 1400 bed hospital in the Music City Center. So right. um, this is not something, again, to your point about being complacent as, as leaders, as people have taken responsibility or make sure our city can get through this, we have not gotten complacent on those plannings. Now we don't, we didn't build a 1400 bed hospital because we didn't need it, thank God, because the people of Nashville helped flatten the curve and we really minimized the need for that. But um, complacency is not an option here. Do you think over the past month, past couple of weeks, we've learned how to treat this virus better? Uh, I think we've learned more about the virus. I think there are some great studies right here in Nashville, much less around the world. Um, and, and I know daily we learn more. So I hope so, but I think, um, and we've been really fortunate in the city and in the state to have a mortality rate that's relatively low compared to the national average. Um, part of that's been luck, part of it maybe our great health systems. Um, and then I know through almost daily conversations I have with um, people, with physicians on who literally are treating people with COVID every day, that they've tried new things, they collaborate amongst systems so best practices can quickly get shared amongst, hmm. let's say, HCA, St. Thomas and National General and Vanderbilt. Um, and so, yeah, they learn new things every day, but I mean, until there's a vaccine, until there's a real proven drug, I mean, it, it, everything is still really, really iffy. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. I wanna remind you, our phone lines are open. So go ahead and give us a call during the break. We'll get those calls lined up. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call if you have a question tonight. We'll be right back. <laughs> 